what is up y'all welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are having a great day this is married to medicine season six episode two i do not talk to dentist so let me tell you guys from right now i feel like hell i feel sick um but i am committed to doing this review so <laughs> if i look crazy just disregard i don't feel well but so the episode starts off with heavenly I'm um, sitting with Alora. Alora has gotten so big and you can tell Alora is just she her mother irritates her. Just like how Heavenly irritates us, she irritates Alora as well. So you can clearly see that. So Dr. Daddy comes in and of course he comes in looking like he reminds me of what is that donkey's name from um Winnie the Pooh? Not Tigger. No, he's not a donkey. Oh, I can't remember his name, but he reminds me of him just always gloomy, always sulking, always, I don't know. That, he, he reminds me of that. So Heavenly tells him about Simone's leather and lace party that they had, and she told him that Mariah made some accusations and said that he was cheating on her. <laughs> and this part made me laugh because, like I said, he reminds me of the donkey. So he just started... I don't know why she would say something like that. I'm, I've never said anything about her. Oh my god! He just, he is just, he sounded like he was about to cry. I, uh, I don't even think Doctor Damon is cheap. He don't even seem like he has the capacity to even speak half the time. So I don't even think he's cheating. I think Heavenly said, uh, not Heavenly. Mariah said that just to get under Heavenly skin, and it clearly worked because. If somebody says something like that to me and I know it was a lie, I wouldn't run and tell my man just to start shit. I wouldn't do that. But Heavenly, she, Heavenly, I think Heavenly feels like he's doing something or he has done something in the past. That is why she's so insecure about her relationship with him. So Contessa and her husband are at home and um, the kids, that little Layla, she's a cute cutie pie, but Layla is a handful. She looks too much. Layla is eating um, sushi and Layla is talking while her mouth is full running around the house and Layla starts to choke. Now it's, it's a good thing that both her parents are doctors so Contessa just went into doctor mode and decided to, not decided to, but um, helped her out with the choking so Layla was fine. Layla needs to calm her little ass down because Layla does too much. So Contessa talks to her husband. She tells him that she talked to her father today and her father said that he has not been feeling the best. So Contessa revealed that her father and mother were married but her father was on drugs and he was never around and as a child she felt like it was because of her. Now now, I this is the first time that I have definitely this is the first time that I really understood Contessa or even remotely felt a connection to her because I was the same way. My father, he was my parents weren't married, but my father was on drugs and I'm my father's only child. And as a young girl, I Okay. As a young girl, I always wondered, like, what did I do? Oh, okay. Hold on. All right. Okay. As a young girl, I always wondered, like, what did I do to make him be the way he was? My father wasn't around. He was on drugs. I had no relationship with him. Um, and his family didn't have a relationship with me. So I felt like it was something I did. And I couldn't understand what happened. And it didn't um, take until... It took me until I was an adult to realize that he was sick. And... But as a child, you don't know that. You don't understand that. You think it's something that you did. And for a long time, I held that in me. Like, I've never talked about my father in depth to anybody. So, um, when he died, it hurt me so much because it was 20... 25 years because he was buried on my birthday it's 25 years and I still didn't know anything about him I didn't know anything about this man I we never sat down and had an adult conversation nothing like that my father when he died he died as an addict 
So I definitely understood what Contessa was feeling because like I said as a child you think that it's your fault what did I do was I bad was is that the reason why he's not coming around and it also hurt with for me because I have other siblings and when they got calls from their dad and their dad would come over I often felt left out because I didn't have anybody to do that with me so I definitely understood what she was saying at that moment and it, it made me respect her. It, it really did make me respect her because throughout all of that trials and tribulations, she still turned out to be a doctor. So, you know, I really respect her. So I, I can honestly say that. Y'all, I did not want to cry. So I was holding that in. So whew, we finally get quad outside of the house outside of the bathroom saying affirmations to herself we finally get her outside with her co-host of the sister circle which is Rashawn Ali and Selena Johnson and um they go out to eat and Quad is talking about you know she really loves being around them they are her sister circle they are her not only co-workers but her friends and she she feels comfortable talking to them feeling like they won't judge her um selena asked her how was it being around the other ladies and quad feels like the women are too judgmental and they will judge her and she just doesn't really want to deal with that and quad is absolutely right these women are some judgmental ass women and all they do is argue when they get around each other so i don't i understand it's a tv show but i could not be around people that I'm arguing arguing with constantly and call them my friends. Like, I just, these people are not friends, they're co-workers. So Quad feels like it's too much drama being around them. And she just really, she knows that being around them, the questions are going to start and she don't want to deal with that right now. She says that the, um, she talks about Dr. G and she says that the fact that he feels so comfortable being in a hotel room with another woman makes her feel like their marriage was not special enough. So we see Toya, she's at an event planning place, which actually their warehouse looks real dope by the way. But um she's an event plan she's at an event planning place and she wants to plan for her birthday. You know, every year Toya has because her birthday is around the same time they film. So Toya has a birthday party every year and this year she wanted it to focus on Dr. Eugene because Dr. Eugene got a new position so she wanted to celebrate him rather than celebrate herself. And I definitely love the way Toya celebrates her husband and encourages him and even though she takes his money. But maybe that's that's their their deal. She celebrates him and he she you know, he gives the money. I don't really know. But I I do like how she made the birthday about him. So I thought that was really cute. So we're at Cecil's house um, and Simone brings one of the pictures she took at the um, leather and lace party. They had like a boudoir spread and she took some pictures. The pictures looked like your everyday run of the mill doctor picture to me. There was nothing sexy about the picture. It just looked like a regular ass picture. So she said that she's going to put it next to the TV so every morning he wakes up he can be um, have wet dreams Well, he'll be no, she said every night before he goes to bed, he will see her face and have a wet dream. I said he will have a wet dream if he fucked him, but, you know, that's just my knowledge and my logic to the whole situation because she still has not slept with her husband. So, Simone did one thing that I was taught as a young Caribbean woman never to do is to put your purse on the floor. And it bothered... Every time I see a woman put her purse on the floor, I get offended because the thing is, I don't know if it's something in the um, States too, like you guys have the saying, I don't really know, but back home, they say if you put your purse on the floor, you're going to lose money. So, I don't put my purse on the floor. I hate to see a woman put her purse on the floor and she had a Louis, I think it was a Louis. She put that shit on the floor. I would never put my Louis on the floor. So, so Cecil, you can tell Cecil is frustrated because here he is working things out with his wife and all he wants to do is connect with his wife on a sexual level. And I don't see anything wrong with that. That is her husband. That is his wife. He wants to feel his wife again. And Simone is, every time when it comes up with sex, he, she shies away from it. She does not want to talk about it. And she makes up excuses as to why she does not want to. My personal opinion, I said something last week where I was wrong. 
I do feel like Simone is over the relationship. She's over the marriage. And she's staying in the marriage because of the show. I don't think that she is still in love with Dr. G. The, not Dr. G. What's his name? Cecil. The way that she wants us to believe. I think that she has checked out. So they're in the kitchen. And they're about to have dinner. And he asked her like how far are we taking the therapy thing because yeah therapy is good but at some point we have to figure out how to do it on our own and she does not feel like they should stop the therapy in my opinion how far do you really how far do you want to take the therapy because years you know 10 more years like how far at some point you have to learn from therapy and like Iyala, you have to learn from the tools that you're given and you have to work on these tools. So how long are you going to be in therapy? I thought that was a valid question in my opinion. But she got upset and she started screaming. And I hate when Simone screams. And I have a friend that works um, with Simone on this show. And I have told him several times, Simone needs to calm the fuck down because Simone screams when she's hyper when she's upset when she's happy Simone just her octaves just go up and it's annoying so Simone starts screaming not when she's drunk scream just like right here and you could tell that she was getting frustrated and Cecil was getting frustrated and, and Simone has a tendency to say things she says things to emasculate her husband. She said that, you know, you can't sleep with somebody who treats their wife bad and I want somebody. She says things to purposefully hurt him. And I've noticed that, especially in this episode, she says things to hurt him. And Simone, you might think that's cute, but at the end of the day, you're only making him run to somebody else. And maybe that is your, that is the point of all this. You want him to leave you because you don't want to leave him again. Y'all just need a divorce if you do not want to be with this man. Because clearly it seems like you are just over this relationship. Alright, so Heavenly goes to Dr. K's house. I'm assuming it's his house. Dr. K is a, um, be I think he's a behavioral doctor? I don't know. But, um, Heavenly went over there because Heavenly wants to, um, deal with her anger issues. She tells him that she gets angry and she can't control it sometimes. Heavenly has a way of telling you her truth in order to to fuck with your head. She tends to do that. But she knows that she does it, but she coats it in the fact where I'm just being the child of God. Heavenly took her name to another level. She feels like she is more heavenly than anybody else and everything she's saying is through God's voice but that is not the case everything you're saying is through anger and hurt and you say it to break people down and she wants to understand why she does stuff because you evil you evil like you make me laugh but you evil and so it's a day it's the day of Toya's party and um the theme is medicine because it is for Eugene but Eugene still doesn't know so they're all showing up at the party. Um, Jackie and Curtis arrive. Jackie looked really nice. I liked her cape. Um, it looked like a modern medical white coat. That's what they call it. It looked like a modern day medical white coat. So I thought it was really, it looked really nice on her. I think she looked really good. Um, everybody looked great. Simone had her titties out. She had a little nurse's costume. It looked nice. So Contessa's husband, Dr. Scott, I learned his name. Dr. Scott came, but Contessa didn't come. So Dr. Scott told the ladies that Contessa didn't come because her father's in town and she had to go to the airport to pick him up, but his flight was delayed and he's not feeling too well, so she's going to stay at home. And the ladies were like, okay, that's fine. The ladies were like, okay, that's fine. Dr. Damon came in walking like Miss Sophia. He just has this black cloud always around his head he just always seems like i just don't like myself i don't know what to do he just has this way about him it's just ugh, just annoying um damon went to the bar and he started talking to some white lady heavenly you know how insecure heavenly is her man can't talk to nobody so Heavenly decides to go over there and ask them what they're talking about. And she said, what could y'all possibly have in common? Why are you talking to my husband? Heavenly is... Heavenly has no class. Heavenly is uncouth. 
Heavenly is a fucking mess. So I felt bad for the woman. It's embarrassing that your wife always has to feel like you cannot have a conversation with anybody because she feels like it's something inappropriate. That is some insecure shit. Heavenly is very insecure. And the fact that Mariah said what she said to her really fucked her over and it fucked her mind up. So Dr. Eugene and Toya arrive and everybody says surprise. And um, Eugene is looking like, okay, why would he think anything different? But why would he think it's a surprise party if he knew his wife was setting it up? But anyways, um, Mariah, you know, says surprise Eugene and he's still like, Okay. He looks like a milk dud to me. But anyway, so Toya says the party's for you because of your promotion. We didn't get to celebrate it, so this is your party. So it was nice. He seemed very shocked, but seemed very happy at the same time. Toya, I think Toya asked where Contessa was, and the ladies told her that Contessa couldn't come because of her father. Toya started getting into her feelings. This is the one thing I do not like about Toya, because Toya makes everything about her. That is the one thing I don't like. Toya is in her feelings because, you know, why didn't she call me? Why didn't she tell me? And I talked to Quad and Quad won't come, but she, she told me over the phone. And I'm like, sometimes you are not a priority, ma'am. Like, my husband is here. He's there representing the both of us. I, I'm not able to come. My husband is going to tell you I'm not able to come. So the fact that you are upset, Toya is just, she acts like a child sometimes. And I just... It bothers me. So we got the fellas together and they are talking about Dr. G and they saying that they sympathize with him because of what he's going through. They don't want him to feel like he's isolated from the group as far as them. And um, they will embrace him as much as they can. And then um, they will embrace him as much as they can. So we don't want Dr. G around, but you know what, whatever. Y'all can, you know. Curtis was the one mainly talking because he was the one that did it. This was him last year, so. So, Toya is giving a speech about everybody that came, and then she started shading Contessa during the speech in front of everybody, which I thought was very distasteful. I thought that she was messy bitch for doing something like that. And uh, Dr. Scott, he is, like, getting upset. And he's saying Contessa couldn't come. Like, he's explaining in front of all these people who should not even know... Contessa's fucking business, but she's not here because her father is sick. Her father came in town. And Toya is, like, screaming over the mic, getting upset. So, I think Jackie or Heavenly called Contessa and, um, you know, to speak to Toya. And Toya has this bitch on speakerphone talking into a mic. So, Contessa is on the phone with everybody. Basically, everybody listening to their conversation. And Toya is over-talking her. And I'm like... This is why I don't like you. This is why, because you do some ghetto ass, hood rat ass shit like this. I don't like Toya because she always gets into her feelings and she always does stupid shit. And I don't like that. And to Dr. Gr what's his name? Dr. Scott was getting so pissed off because I'm like, he's like, okay, you you are not in the equation. My wife has a priority and her priority comes first. Thinking about you is not what she's doing right now. And I totally get it. Like, if it was, you know, she just, you know, a little under the weather, fine. But her father's in town. Her father is sick. That is her parent. Calling you probably was not even on her mind. And then her husband is there. So he is representing the both of them. The, he's representing the both of them. So the fact that she is so in her feelings is just... Toya has this feeling like everybody has to tell her their business. She did the same shit to Jackie last last season. She she did the same shit to Quad. Like she feels like you need to tell me your business or we're not real friends. Bitch, please. Bitch, please. I don't have to tell you shit I don't want to tell you. That's her fucking problem. Toya likes to be in everybody's fucking business and then goes back and talks to somebody else telling said business. I don't like her. She annoys me. I don't know how Dr. Egghead can even deal with this woman. She is just, I don't know how he can deal with her. And rather than him, like, saying, you fucking wrong. Like, telling her you are wrong. He's like, well, it's very, un like, why do you say something like that? Before? You can just not say something right then and later. Like, tell her. Because she feels like she can do whatever she wants because you're not going to check her. 
Oh my God, this woman drives me crazy. So Dr. Scott is like so upset that he's telling this random white man how upset he is. And he's he's just upset. And I can understand that. And I, I would have left if I was him. I wouldn't have stayed there. Fuck, fuck you and your goddamn party. Fuck y'all. Bye. I would have left. All right, so that was the end of the episode. I didn't realize it was the end of the episode. So next week, um, they're going to have some crab boil and Quad is going to show up. And it looks like Mariah hits Quad. I oh, hope we doing that now. Okay. So stay tuned for next week's episode of Married to Medicine. I forgot what this was. Um, Once this is done, I'm about to go watch Insecure. And I will film my Insecure, my insecure review. Y'all, I am hot. And it's not even hot. I hope I'm not getting the flu. But I'll go ahead and film my insecure review. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to thumbs up this video. And do not forget to... Oh, check out my... <laughs> Don't forget to check out my website, justbeheard.com. I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.